a video on me faffing around, surprisingly. So uh, I need to uh, faff around with something uh, for an idea, uh, so I might as well film it. This is a whole uh, chuck, uh, and it's quite expensive, so it's like 100 quid. And what I want to do is, uh, I, I use this for breaking stick, and what I want to do is I want to, um, like I did with the, the pork shoulder, I want to do like a, a round of uh, meat which I can slowly braise um, and then kind of serve like a um, like a disc like a disc on some either some mashed potato or some polenta or something like that um, I tried um, brisket uh, but in the UK I don't think brisket's particularly very good and doesn't by the time it's tender I find it a little bit dry my personal opinion probably not everyone's personal opinion but my personal opinion is once it takes a long time to cook and by the time it's cooked it's a little bit dry so I think if we use chuck instead I think it would be better uh, although it's just a case of navigating a whole chuck which it's made up of lots of different kind of muscle groups um, so my idea is that we'll take a couple of bits off that we can't slowly braise and then and then what? Uh, and then kind of see. So I'm kind of thinking my way through it as I kind of go, as always. Um, so there's two bits on the top. I don't know what they're called. I should do, but I don't. So there's this flappy bit here, uh, which I normally cut off, and that makes delicious brazen steak. Does that little bit there? So I'll kind of guess. I'm, I'm generally not bothered about where I kind of cut it. So it's uh, cutting off kind of quite easy. So that's one kind of muscle group there. And this muscle group here makes delicious brazen steaks. Absolutely delicious. So if I had my choice, I'd just buy that. And that's what I'd do my brazen steaks out of. But I think I might be able to tie that up a bit so it makes like a, a nice round. But anyway, so that's that bit and then there's this eye of a meat here which looks a little bit like uh, like a like a fillet but it's not so I just need to using a carving knife for, for meat preparation I shouldn't be doing but I don't care so Tease that away from there, and then you'll be able to see it's like an eye of meat with a big lump of fat connected to it. So, it looks like a fillet. You take it off, it's not a fillet, it certainly wouldn't cook like a fillet. And you see that still, and no, I'm just teasing it away from there, like that. So, it looks like a fillet. Do you know, and if you were unscrupulous. And pull that like sinew off there, you could probably pretend that was a fillet. And if you were wanting to rip people off, that's what you could do. But I'm not into that type of thing. And then we've got a lump of fat that's attached to it. So like, oh, knocking the camera, I can feel it touching my head. I don't know how much this weighs, I think it's about 20 kilos, something like that. I bought one the other week and it was 25 kilos and it was 125 quid. So if this is 100 quid, I reckon it would be like 20 kilos. So slice that off there. Get rid of that lump of meat, that lump of fat, which I will turn into beef dripping. And then we're left with this bit here. So I keep meaning to take one of these. Oh, I did. I did. I what did I do? Uh, there's a, uh, a steak. The rib. What's it called? Is it, no, it's not the ribeye, but it's like something the crop end or something like that. And I fished that out a few, a few months back, and it's kind of quite nice. But anyway, so my idea is that oh, we need to turn it over. And there's some these bits, which are where the ribs were. We don't want those, so they're gonna. If we roll it up. It's going to be it's not going to be kind of quite uniform so i want those bits off so they'll go into they'll be slowly braised and they'll be turned into 
pint of meat, but that's where the ribs were. So there was meat there and then there was rib in there. So those out of the way. And then that's a bit of an excess there. That we don't want that on there. That can get rendered down. And then I think I think I can take like that bit there like that and I reckon I can tie it up slowly braise it in some in some stock and kind of get like a like that kind of shape that kind of shape so it'll be all tied together and it'd be like that kind of shape and then once we slowly all braise it all together whole and then we'll be able to cut it into portions and uh, once it's cooled and then kind of heat it up about that way because it will just be too tender when i've cooked it it'll just be too tender to slice which is fine if you're at home but if you're kind of serving it to people you kind of want to it to look kind of presentable uh, people kind of yeah people still eat with their eyes rather than you know they want something to look pretty so anyway so that's that so i reckon i can i might get a bit fat down that end but anyway so if i can what i'm going to do just risk it for a biscuit that way. That's fine. See if I, I don't want to mess it up. If I get it right the first time, I can actually use it. So I think it looks like it's pretty flat. We'll see. We'll see. So there. I think it's going to be a, a good meat, a bit of meat underneath. That there, that looks pretty, pretty uniform. Let's get that out of the way, and then we're left with that. So, if we can tie that up and make it look a little bit more pretty. So, lady butchers, not. So, I'll show you what I'm doing. So. We'll go somewhere in the middle, like there, and then with the, the cut end, you go round twice, so round once, which is just like a single knot, and then you go round again, and then because of that, you create more tension in the string. When it's tight, like that, that it's not gonna slip too much. So you slip like, I'm not gonna count it, so tight like that, and then round like that, and then there's enough tension in the string that you don't need a third hand to hold the string, so I can't. I still haven't got around. There's always, still, always so much to do. So I like that, and then another one. So I'm going to have to tie it up, but it will keep it together. But you get the idea. So I'll show you what I'm, I'll just have to do that again. Because when people explain things to me, I always need like three or four times for people to kind of show me. Because people kind of want to do it really quick. Um, and you don't kind of see what they're doing. Um, so I just don't think that some people are particularly very good teachers. So we go round once, then round again, and then pull it tight. And then we've got a good amount of tension in the string. And then it's just a simple case of pulling that that way, and then it keeps it all together. And then just a, let me just do a double knot just in case. And then a double knot, and then that'll hold that in place. And then you don't have to learn how to do fancy butcher's knot um although probably learning how to do a butcher's knot is probably not the worst thing you could ever learn so and again so that like that round once which is like how you tie your shoes actually you do that first one and then you do the loops but we're going to go around again pull it tight always kind of keep like a long length there and then you've got something to pull on this wants to be a bit thicker so pull and then twist round, and then the tension in the string will keep it together and you don't need that another person to help you or be faffing around so we'll do another one and i'm going to do it all so we'll go right along the length i'm going to see how it turns out i don't want the fat in there i don't want that fat in there don't want that fat in there let's see if we can just
so I'm going to get a big lump of fat, which I don't really want in their portion. My dad would have absolutely loved to have found a big lump of fat in his meat like that. He would have thought it was wonderful, but lots of people don't like big lumps of fat of meat. So there we go. We'll just cut that out. It'll be a little bit more presentable. So, there we go. So, one more time. Just like tiny shoes, round, we're going to go around twice, so round once, and then round again, pull tight, and then that there, and then single knot again, single knot again. So I'll carry on going along, right the way along the joint of meat. There's some fatty bits at that, at that far end. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we kind of get to it, but they won't be wasted. So, and then we'll kind of have a look. So I'll do the rest of it, and we'll see how it turns out, but you can already see but it's already taken that round shape, which is kind of what I want. And then when it cooks, it'll keep in that position. And then we're going to portion it accordingly. So I'll weigh what it, I'll weigh, I'll weigh it before, and then we'll kind of weigh it after, and we'll kind of see what kind of what portions we kind of get out of it. Um, but yeah, but you just with braising steak, it's lovely, it's delicious uh, when it's slow cooked. Uh, it just unfortunately looks like a like a, a lump lumps of meat on your plate. Uh, and I want something just a little bit more fancy. So I'll cut that off there. I'll carry on and then we'll come back when it's all done. Right, so you get the idea. It's now in a nice, probably needs a bit more string there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just nice there. Just needs a little bit more tightening up there. I'll pause. You don't need to see it. Right, so there we go. Um. It's a bit too big for my pan. I have got a bigger pan, but it's even a little bit too big for that. And I want it to, I want it to cook straight. I don't want it to cook uh, with a bend in it. So I'm going to use a smaller pan. I'm going to cut it in half. So hopefully, cut it about there. I think that's going to be that I want. So we'll cut it through there. And then we'll just be able to have a look at what it looks like inside. That looks good, doesn't it? Can you see that? Yeah. So that looks like it's going to be good. So hopefully, we'll keep it all in place. So that in there, that in there, and then board out the way. I haven't got any space. I've never got any space. You can never have too big a kitchen, by the way. So that in there, and then I was faffing around with some I bought chicken stock earlier. So normally I'd use beefy stock, but we've got chicken stock, so we can use that in there. And then we've got some ham stock as well, so that can go in there as well. So just a case of using it up. And then I'm going to put um, some beef stock in as well. Well, some bought beef stock. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to make any beef stock. I'm just going to uh, use <coughs> some stock cubes. So more water, beef stock, brick. <coughs> I've been eating breadcrumbs. Um, well, <coughs> croutons. Um, so a little bit more water. Um, stock cubes, uh, I'm not going to put any herbs in or uh, vegetables or anything like that. Uh, I can't see much point because uh, because well, basically what happens is although the vegetables and things impart flavour into the stock, uh, the vegetables actually take on flavour of the beef as well, which kind of, and then you throw the vegetables away, which is alright if you're going to make a stew, but like to, to make something like this you end up throwing the vegetables away and then it's kind of like a waste because uh, they've, they've, they've nicked all that flavour uh, from the from the beef, um, but anyway. So, bring it to the boil and then a slow simmer until it's nice and tender. We'll let it go cold and then we'll be able to have a see. Oh, I should have weighed it, shouldn't I? I'll weigh it. I'll do. Oh. So we'll kind of get an idea and then I'll be able to see. So, clock that out of the way. It looks the dirt of that bowl, but it was just from the stock powder. So, how much weight have we got in beef? We've got 1.6 kilos. 1.6 kilos of beef there. And then, if this is successful, we'll be able to work out how many portions I get out of all of that uh, chuck. But anyway, so water, stock. So anyway, water, stock, up to the boil and then a slow, 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 slow simmer 
probably for about three hours, maybe a little bit longer, depending, depending, and then we'll let it go cool, and then we'll, uh, once it, and it will, the proteins will set, so it will it'll be super tender when it's cooked and it won't fall to bits. That's what the string's there for, it's going to keep it all together. When it goes cold, it will set back up and we'll be able to get a nice disc of meat, which will look pretty, very pretty on the plate. So, these are nice and cooked. And the way we can tell is that when we stick a fork in them, like so, it easily falls off the fork. So, I don't know if you can kind of see, might be a little bit too dark, but that end's not so good. Uh, it doesn't like it'll make a nice particular portion, but that end's fine. Um, but that's fine. That end won't get used to we'll use uh, wasted. We'll put it in some. Uh, we'll put it in a, um, in for pie meat. So best thing to do is cool it down in that stock in the pan so that pan in a big container of water so it's like a water jacket all around it and it'll disperse the heat a lot quicker uh, and then we'll pull it out and then we'll have a look at it tomorrow uh, when it's cooled down and set up in the fridge overnight but I have high hopes cooled let's have a look so you can see how much they've shrunk through the cooking process just need to cut through the spring and they'll still hold together till they're firmed up. And then we can get an idea of portions and that type of thing. I suppose I should weigh it, shouldn't I? Let's just get and just weigh this. Scales, so how much do these weigh cooked? 1.6 stroke 7 kilos. That's alright, so I'm going to See that bit there is going to be probably a little bit too small, a little bit too ragged, ragged to put on a, a portion. So that will just get used as. I'm just going to a pie, which is fine. So get an idea of what it's going to look like, and what kind of yield I'm going to get, and all that kind of stuff. Tastes good. Nice and tender. And then I'll warm a bit through later on when I'm going to have something to eat and we'll have a look at see what that looks how it warms back through it's certainly a lot nicer than brisket I've said those bits they can go into the pie pile so what do you reckon Five portions out of that. And then let's have a look at this. Sure, if I've given myself more work doing it this way, and then we'll have a look at this bit at the end. We might be able to. It won't just. Be, it'll be a, a deeper portion than one at the end. It 
might have that lump of fat in so we'll just have to be a bit careful. Alright, so bits of string out of the way. There's so a five, six, seven, eight. Eight portions. Let's cut through and see. So where did I say? I said about the I think that's gonna be a decent enough portion. Yeah, I think so. That on something on a plate. Unfortunately, it's got that going all the way through it. So you just have to be a bit careful about that. So we'll cut there as well. And let's see what we can have a look at that. Could you get away with using that as a portion? Yeah, I think so. It'd just be kind of taller, so if you can imagine that that's like half that diameter, so you get double the thickness. So, I think that works, and then that just goes to pie. To pie meat. You can see it's just falling to bits. So I have to be careful when we're heating it up. Look. Let's have a look. So, I'm afraid that I heat it up. And what did we say? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine or ten portions out of that kind of meat size. Okay, that's fine. So we'll heat it up and we'll see how it turns out. Right. I have warmed up the disc of brazier steak. It weighs uh, about 170 grams, which I think is going to be a half decent sized portion. So I was going to do it with mashed potato. Um, but I do actually do this, but I'm, I'm not going to make mashed potato. I was making polenta for something else. So we'll use a bit of polenta instead, which I think will actually work particularly well. So, polenta on the plate. No, that can stay there. And then carefully get this bit of raisin steak out of the pan. It's very tender. And I've made it, done it in some nice thick gravy. So that'll be fine. Yeah, I think that's a decent sized portion. Not like that. And then we've got a few. From a tea. So, can I see? I want a bit of sauce over the top. And then I'll have to pause because I need to take a picture. So, I need to send it to the person who wants to do the, the function. But anyway. Right, let's give it a taste. Let's see if it is as tender as it looks. Yeah, that's super tender, is that? That's super tender. It smells good as well. Mmm, that's a winner. That'll work. So, there we go, that works. So, I wouldn't advise doing it at home. I think it's a bit of a work. Uh, unless you want to be a little bit fancy um, but yeah that works and I'll be able to make it look a little bit better than it normally does